much. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, so now we are moving uh, to the next talk. Um, and I absolutely forgot to actually introduce myself. So I would just tell you a bit about myself. I joined Women Tech Makers Britain um, last year in August. And um, I have a background in branding and marketing. And I'm currently... Uh, working in UX research um, and uh, I work on the side of technology in terms of understanding users uh, and building human-centered technologies. Um, so uh, now I would like to uh, introduce Elisa who is um, an economist and a philosopher. She has studied at uh, uh, top tier universities such as um, Potsdam University, Cambridge University, and also now studying at Freie Univers uh, University. She has also, um, she is now in the process of co-founding a think tank that tackles the challenges of ethical issues in building technologies. Um, and the uh, think tank is called uh, Rethink Ethics. Um, right now she is working on that and previously she has worked on meetup.ai uh, um, and that's a, a group of people that uh, hold um, frequent uh, meetups in, uh, in order to gather the community that, that is working on AI um, and uh, discuss the issues of ethics. She is interested particularly in the ethics of AI and also um, biotechnology and she will give now a talk about uh, what do we need to consider when we want to build technologies that benefits uh, that benefit our society? So please um, welcome Elisa, and she will now share her talk. Yes. So Elisa, as you're setting up, as you're sharing your screen, I want to remind everyone this is the last chance to sign up for the mentoring, both as a mentor and as a mentee. We're going to do matching one on one, and you have the links in our internet in our IWD Slack channel. So just sign up, fill up the form, and we're going to do matching. So then you can uh, either contribute time to somebody or um, uh, ask the questions you want. And if you learn anything cool from the previous talk or from this talk, please share on Twitter. We're at WTM underscore Berlin, and the hashtag is IWD2020. Lisa, the stage is yours. Hey, so you guys all hear me, I hope so? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, welcome. And I'm super, super thankful to um, have the opportunity to join this talk today. Um, I'm super impressed by all the past speakers. Um, yeah, and I hope I can share my knowledge with you today and that you gain some insight from a really different perspective of the one of a philosopher. So as previously mentioned, I'm right now working on a think tank called Rethink Ethics and Tech, um, where we want to look at both ethics, uh, but also tech problem from like a more holistic approach. Um, I didn't prepare like so much on myself. Maybe I can do this um, in the beginning. So previously I was always passionate about philosophy, but like in school people said, okay, don't study philosophy, you will be a taxi driver in the end. So I was like, hmm, okay, maybe I should do something more where I can actually um, earn some money with or like have a real value with. So I studied economics and went into banking, went into the finance industry. And there I saw that like ethical issues are not discussed as much. So I realized, okay, I don't want to be part of it. I actually want to change it. So um, I went into the path of academic philosophy and um, yeah, and I'm fan in love with this. So, like for the past three or four years, I studied philosophy. I'm going to start my PhD soon about ethics and artificial intelligence. Um, yeah, so I think we can start now. If there's any questions about me and my path, we can do this in the end. I think. Um, so the first would be um, identifying the problem. So. I'm a philosopher and I will tell you how to integrate ethics in your business and your daily life to, um, and this can help you to design, build and use technologies which are beneficial both for us and the environment. Since I was young I always wanted to be like a great scientist, explore and understand how the world works but recently I realized um, that this is for me not enough. I actually want to go in the real world and put the tool, tools I have um, into 
um, like a practical context. Um, so um, identifying the problem, I called it a gap. Um, and I will now share with you what this actually means to me. So um, I will uh, start with the technology everyone is familiar with, the, the technology of communication. It enables us, everyone, no matter, no matter how rich or poor, to be a part of a public discourse. Everyone can afford a phone, like most people in our countries, and try to raise the issue they care about with the public. Um, they can easily join a movement. At the same time, stay in touch with friends, build lo a loyal following of fans. So everyone can voice their, um, can raise their voice. Uh, and this is an amazing thing, of course. But I realized, especially in university, that somehow the people doing the decisions and um, actually deciding um, how the technology is built um, are super distinct from the people working on the theories. So my idea was put, this, uh, put these people together. And also, I, meant, I realized that many people are not really being heard. So I want to build a platform where these people are being heard and um, yeah, share their ideas and make them actually accessible to everyone. Um, and, and the question is, if when these people decide about our technologies, if anyone is let out in the end, if they build technology for all of us, especially when we look in bias and artificial intelligence, or like it's so many other technologies, like uh, the past talk I mentioned, bioethics, which is like a topic I'm really passionate about as well. And these are kind of things affect like all of us. So I think we all should be part of the public discourse. So um, I decided to actively take responsibility and be part of the new future we all talk about in the media with writers for future. Um, so yeah, so but what is actually the problem? So here I have some of the like headlines in, in, in big, big um, kind of magazines like is there hope? Um, what, what ethicists should do in the end? Is, may, is it maybe too late for in implementing ethics in big data and artificial intelligence? And maybe some people think so. And especially when I talk to startups and I work as a freelance consultant as well, um, helping startup to tackle this kind of ethical issues. Before I was working in a big consulting company uh, with combating uh, financial crime. And I saw that many of these companies are not even aware of maybe the um, reputation damages they can get or all the other problems um, they can lead into when they don't really tackle these problems. But what is ethics? So um, Wikipedia, would say, I think I, yeah, I googled it, and Wikipedia said it's some set of moral principles, but no one really knows what this means. When people hear I'm a philosopher, I'm doing ethics, they're like, okay, so you're like something of religion. <laughs> so they really don't really get it. And they're like super confused. So I want to have a slide to so just like lead you into the world of ethics. So there are two broad things discussed in ethics. The first one is the utilitarianism, which was invented by Bentham. It's an attempt to maximize happiness and reduce the suffering of the greatest number of people. It's something we will see in ethical debate today a lot, the argument that, okay, it's good for most people. But on the other hand, there the, stays Kant. I think maybe everyone knows Kant, it's one of the biggest philosophers, and he said there's a certain set of rules, like for example, you're not allowed to kill, even, maybe, even though maybe the consequence would be good. Or you're not allowed, I don't know, having an abortion. So I think there are problems with both of these approaches. So I think like modern philosophers try to combine them somehow. But I think what is important when we talk about ethics and technology is understanding what technology is. And we can for sure say it means change, some kind of change. Um, in architecture, as you see in the slide, um, but also in your daily life. I think like t uh, technologies determine our society so quick at the moment that we really have to slow down sometimes and say, okay, what is actually happening right now? And when I speak with, speaker, with people outside of the philosophy community on more 
um, on the tech side, for example, I'm part of uh, the new ethics uh, lab of the uh, TU Berlin. And we have a lot of data scientists there, engineering stu uh, students, and when I talk about, with them about, for example, which kind of power uh, these technology companies have or um, the ethical issues, they sometimes don't really get what I'm saying. So that's the reason I want to, to found this think tank, to actually have a common language and bring this into disciplinary teams as the previous speaker said as well, I think, like, I think we all know that only with interdisciplinary teams with people from different cultures, people of different gender, people of different, like even religious or like cultural backgrounds, we can do the best decisions and we can create something really great in the end and build this new future and not, don't repeat the same mistakes all over again. But yeah, sometimes it's really hard to be heard as a philosopher in this kind of tech world. So I joined Meetup AI and um, like I think most of my, my friends are programmers. So we can actually um, build something together. So yeah, so the next slide would be that technology has definitely, definitely a potential. It enables us to do something, sometimes to increase something or sometimes to limit us. Um, I put out three examples. Uh, the first one is health. It's, uh, there's a really interesting think tank I spoke with. It's uh, the Center of Humane Technology. Maybe some of you know this. You should definitely Google it at, at one point. Um, they say it's it decreasing our societal structure. It destroys our society, actually. For example, when you look at smartphones, it's like, or many many apps, they're um, built very addictively. So you scroll and you scroll and you, you put like so much time in it and you forgot sometimes about the real world. So it can be a threat to our mental and physical health, um, but also a potential as we saw in the previous, in the previous talk. So uh, they have always both sides, also freedom. Like we are able to fly around like to um, actually start a revolution of technology that I think is a great, great thing. But on the other hand, it shouldn't be used to, um, to monitor people. I think I was on an event on um, grocery shopping and on computer vision and pe many people are afraid that people are monitored. So I think when we all have this discourse and build technologies that we all feel comfortable with, I think then some kind of changes will be um, bring quicker and better. And one of the things I wanted to mention as well is equality. Like it has the chance to bring poor and rich and uh, people with different backgrounds together, like in this online conference, which I think is a great idea. <laughs> I love that I have the opportunity to join today. But also set them apart. Like even with, I saw like so many think tanks and you have the highest professor and the tech leader. But I think even in my age, um, and I'm super young, so I'm, I think even we can do something and we should raise our voice and say our opinion because it matters. Um, so yeah, even though I don't have like 20 years of experience in a certain company, I still believe that I can do something. And yeah, I would love to take you all of the journey with me. So yeah, I will explain this later. Um, so some kind of application in ethics today um, also cover, for example, existential risk. I think that's a really interesting topic covered by many science fiction movies um, that we shouldn't develop a technology that actually is a threat to our humanity. Um, I recently went on a Google event and um, there was a head of responsibility management there and she said, we all read that kind of books um, because we actually want to see what would be the un unwanted outcomes and they actively say, okay, we want to do this and not that. So that's actually great. And I think like more companies should do that. So um, that's one issue, um, but also access rights, digital rights, human enhancement, completely different topic. Maybe you can do it in the Q and A, but yeah, it's also a, a possibility, but also a huge limitation. Um, so, we see there's a gap. There are all these ethical problems, all these ethical issues, and these technologies that are built by people who are not aware of them, sometimes don't want to think about them, sometimes really want to think about them, but don't have time in their normal business. So that's the reason 
um, yeah, I, I came up with this idea, um, especially when the professors are telling me they sometimes feel that they're only um, writing papers for a few people and not really, really being able to go in the industry. So I think there's like a gap there, obviously. So what can we do, do about this? Um, taking a new perspective, I think um, ethics is a great tool. It's a great thing. Um, but I think we need all of us, we need all perspective to build something new. And therefore, I called it Rethink Ethics and Tech because I think we should implement ethics um, in our daily lives, but also tech from really different perspectives. Um, yeah, and rethink the way we design, develop, and use technology. So I have this new practical approach to philosophy, and I'm aware that maybe some of my colleagues, philosophy colleagues, will, will, will laugh at this and say maybe that's not real philosophy. But I think when we, people from academia are on the top edge and say, okay, um, we don't want to do, have to do with any real problems, what are we doing in the end? What I am studying? For who I'm doing this PhD? So, uh, I'm all over the world, they want to join me. We're working on this um, now, so that finished, but I hope we'll be soon after uh, within the next week and make them accessible. So often when you have this kind of academic talks so or someone talking a long time, you're gonna switch off after like two minutes. So I want to do something different and maybe, yeah, I hope you're all gonna stay tuned and gonna see what we're going to have come up with. But uh, as you see, I'm maybe in the background doing some kind of design thinking at the moment. So um, this is a really fun, interesting ride for me and it's super scary as hell as well. Because um, as so many people say, sometimes you can feel, okay, overwhelmed and not prepared. But actually a good friend advised me never going to feel super prepared. So it's a journey every day. I'm happy to live it. Um, for how we create value, one for universities connecting, as I already said, for companies um, taking different perspective into consideration right from the beginning of the product planning phase in order to create technology that is beneficial um, for humanity and environment. And I think often environment is forgotten in like past approaches. So this would be a really interesting thing. And for you, being part of a network of experts, gaining insights and making real impact. Uh, I hope this, uh, I know this is a huge goal, um, but I don't know, like, I think what we have to try it at least. Um, I think like in one of, our, of the talks today, someone said, what would you do um, when you could try everything? And I just run with this idea and yeah, we will see where it leads me. Uh, so what can you do? Um, integrate ethics in your daily life. I think like just, um, rethinking or taking different perspectives on day-to-day -day decisions sometimes can lead to better outputs. Sometimes we're so stuck in our belief system um, that we don't really see how it could be different. So this helped me in my career to change my career many times, to work for big companies, to get into great universities, even though I never believed that I could do. Um, but yeah, I think someone said to me as well, like, when, when you don't believe in yourself, who, would be, who, who will believe in you? So I'm the biggest fan of my project at this moment. And I'm um, happy to, to have people around me that support me so much. Working in this interdisciplinary teams, I think even in a company or when you want to go in a company, when you're seeking a job, people are actually seeking people that think outside the box, take a different perspective. Um, and yeah, and that want to actually shape the future we want to live in. A good friend, but also a consultant within the, um, one of the biggest car manufacturers in Germany. And he, he, he said it was a really hard part to convince the people that ethics is a real thing they should consider to avoid some problems they had in the past. So I think um, we can bring this into companies and create value and be a value, um, valued em employee. Um, yeah, so 
this is the QR code for the website uh, or follow those on LinkedIn. You can also find this. Or of course, let's connect. I'm on Twitter since yesterday, I think, um, and on LinkedIn um, and discuss how this journey could be, what, are, what your ideas are or what are your problems in your academia, business, personal development. Yes, so thank you. That's it. And I think the time is, is right, so. Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much um, for this fantastic talk. Um, I think I would like to remind people that this is the last chance to uh, sign up for the mentorship um, forum. We have about 10 minutes to go. Uh, so if you haven't, please do, and uh, you will get great career advices and um, help uh, to, to reach your professional goals. Uh, we'll take a few questions now. Um, Okay, um, I think uh, there aren't too many questions from the audience, so I will ask you uh, one. So, um, one of the most famous experiments in um, ethics and technology is the trolley problem um, that uh, is uh, designed in a way to force people to consider the ethical um, sides of their decisions, uh, especially in technology and in real life as well. Um, what are uh, kind? What are what is the kind of tools that you are um, designing to help people think in a uh, in an ethical way? Because ethic, um, is ethics is a quite um, an abstract uh, approach or an abstract concept that people cannot really put in in a pragmatic or practical uh, way into their work. Um, so if you could share, for example, some scenarios or role playing that you're using to help engineers and designers and product managers to um, think in, in an ethical way when they design their products. Yes. Um, so that's, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Great. So um, yeah, I think that's a great, great question, especially like the trolley problem is all over. I think like in every ethics and tech co uh, conference it's, it's talked about. But actually, I think with the trolley problem and the people who don't know it, maybe I can explain for a second, um, that you have a self-driving car and you have to decide whether you implement the rule that it maybe drive over the old person or a young person or a dog. Uh, there is a website called, I think, More Machines on the MIT. You can do the, uh, the try yourself and see what kind of ethicist you would be. It's kind of, quite a fun. But I think actually this is kind of a problem with ethics. If you take this like, huge kind of constructed um, examples which are like out there and you think okay why do I have drive over people like why do you take me this position I don't want to take this decision and I, and I think like technology is not there to make this decision like there's always people behind this and especially with the trolley problem like I spoke with some engineers and there's like actually no real thought about um, having a certain kind of um, rule that says, okay, drive only over this person because it will drive um, forward and, um, and stop when it can and doesn't stop when it, not, when it doesn't can. So it doesn't really matter who's in front of you. So I think like one of the um, biggest issues I saw speaking with each other, sometimes I work in an IT company myself uh, in communication and there was like the, the table where the programmer said, and the, uh, the table where the management and marketing people said, and it was super weird because no one was speaking with each other. And I went to them and said, okay, what are you doing at this moment? Like, I, I want to see, I want to um, share my knowledge. And we created some, some great products in the end. So I think just talking to each other is a huge step, even though it, it, it sounds super low key. Um, but in the other, other thing, like, yeah, consider something else. I think like biases, it's, it's the biggest, um, kind of topic out there in AI at the moment. For example, um, having the female, female perspective in products because like sometimes you have, um, for example, a different kind of um, approach to things or like even sometimes your voice isn't recognized because it's a female voice or something like this. But I don't think that only having diversity in gender is the solution. We need a diversity all over and uh, therefore I'm glad to be part of this today 
and uh, tell this kind of low-key ideas, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I'll check if there are more questions. Um, I think no. Um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out to Elisa um, if you want to connect or share some ideas. Thank you so much for this fantastic talk. Um, and I hope you can stay with us if there is someone who wants to ask them the questions, uh, if you are available on Slack. Um, thanks a lot, everyone. Now we will continue 